Hi, today we're going to work on a simple photo retouch using Corel Photo Paint. I'm in Corel Draw now, and um, I got a suggestion from someone on another video saying I should try and make my videos as, as short as possible, um, since people don't have a lot of spare time these days. So I'm going to take that advice and make this as fast as I can. Uh, that being said, let's dive into it. Uh, this is a picture I got from Pixabay. They've got some nice higher resolution photos on there. And this is an attractive woman, um, and she's got a few issues going on here. Uh, probably not the worst problem anybody ever had, but let's see if we can give her some virtual makeup. I'm in Corel Draw now. I always like to start there because you can do a lot of uh, bitmap effects right in Draw. Um, I'm going to start here by converting this to a bitmap because right now it's a JPEG, which is a bitmap, but a JPEG does not have a transparent background. It's not an option. And I want a transparent background. I'm going to make it 150, a medium resolution, just for the video. We'll go RGB since we're using a monitor display for this. And we do want to select anti-aliasing and this uh, transparent background. And we'll see why in a minute. All right. Now it looks the same, but it's transparent. Now I'll go to Edit Bitmap, and that's going to take us straight into Corel Photo Paint. That's why I like this program. The two work hand in hand together. And this is Corel Photo Paint. I'm going to start here with the Clone Tool. This one up here is called the Clone Tool. And let's see what the Clone Tool does. As you might imagine, it clones one area of the photo to another. So if I take a sample right here of this clear skin, I can clone it onto this part. Okay, I can do the same thing up here. If I double click my space bar, it clears my clone. I can take another sample up here, do the same thing. I do have my brush settings set with the fuzzy clone here and uh, a transparency of 50, which I found is a good starting point for the clone tool. You do want some transparency or else it'll look blotchy. Okay, I'm going to come over here, take a sample of that, clear skin, fill that in. I'm going to do the same thing down here, a couple of places, clone, and I'm going to Clone. Take your sample as close as you can to the place you want to fix. All right. I think that's okay. Um, now that we've gotten rid of those, you can look up here. It's still her skin uh, has a little bit of, you know, nobody's skin is perfect if you look at it this close. Uh, but we can uh, make it look a lot smoother. And let's see a couple of techniques for doing that. I'm going to open up my object menu up here, and I've got an object. I'm going to right-click my mouse, and I'm going to uh, duplicate this object. Now I have two. Two objects, one on top of the other, two photos, and uh, they're on different layers. So I'm going to make sure I'm working on the top layer. In fact, I'm going to turn that bottom one off to make sure I'm not accidentally working on the wrong one. And I'm going to give this photo a slight blur by going to Effects, Blur. Now you can see there are different kinds of blurs you can experiment with. I'm going to go with the good old Gaussian Blur. And what I want to do is fuzz this out a little bit. See if I can get it look a, look a little softer. That's a little much there. But maybe about here. About like that, just to give it a little bit of a softer look. Okay, you want to save your save your work just by hitting the little save thing. As get in the habit of doing that often, um, it's nothing more disappointing than losing power or something when you're halfway through a, a project and you've already been working on it for a while. Uh, now that we've blurred this out. 
what I'm going to do is go to my smudge tool. This is my brush over here. And see this little Q-tip thing? That'll open my smudge. And as you imagine, the smudge tool smudges pixels together. Um, let's see how it works. My smudge tool is, is a brush. Um, so I can use brush settings. And uh, I like this fuzzy one so it doesn't give it a hard edge. And uh, I've got an 82 as a size. My transparency default, default is zero. You don't want to use a zero transparency with the smudge. Let me show you why. It'll smudge too much. You can see it's easy to ruin your photo if you do that. So let's not use a zero transparency. Instead, let's go up to 90. 90% transparency, which is uh, quite high, but that'll give me a nice subtle smudge. So you can see, if you work slowly, it won't look blotchy. In fact, you might not even be able to tell I'm doing anything. But I'm going to go ahead and smudge this all out. I'm going to put on pause while I do that, so you don't have to sit here watching the whole thing. All right, I've been smudging, and I'm using a graphics tablet instead of a mouse. Whenever I use a brush in photo paint, an airbrush or the smudge or whatever, sometimes I like to use that. It gives you a little bit more control over it, just because it's, uh, it's like an old-fashioned uh, airbrush or a pen or whatever. So you might want to consider getting a graphics tablet if you're going to be doing this kind of work. I'm just going around and smudging and smudging till I like it. And I think for the purpose of the video, that's going to be good enough. So let's go back to see what it looked like before we smudged it. There's before smudge and after smudge. Before smudge and before the blur. This is actually the bottom object. I'm doing that by turning this top layer on and off. Okay, so you can see the original. Remember, we already got rid of some of the stuff that was going on in here. And there's the smudge one. Now, another step we're going to have to take is to fix these areas here that should not be blurry. Her mouth, her fingers, especially her fingernails with the sparkly stuff, her earrings, her hair. We have to get all that sharp. And how, how I'm, the, the way I'm going to do that is with my eraser. Now, here's my eraser here on my menu bar. And... Uh, it is a brush, just like the smudge, so I can use brush settings. I'm using the fuzzy eraser. I'm using a transparency of zero because I want this to look sharp. So um, what I'm going to do is, using my graphics tablet, I'll go up here, and I'm going to erase the areas that should be in focus. So what I'm doing is revealing the, the photograph underneath the blurry one. Remember, there's two, one on top of the other. So I'm erasing this. You can see where I've erased here. And what you want to erase is all the areas that should be sharp. So the contour of her face here, where her nose is, the whole outline of, of her chin. You, know, you want all that to be in focus. As I said, her fingers need to be in focus especially this uh, sparkly fingernail stuff. You can see how that comes right back into focus. I'm going to do her whole hand here. I'm going to put it on pause. And now her hand and her mouth and her nose and everything are in focus. You can see the parts where I've erased. Once again, the erase parts, we're looking at the bottom photograph, the one underneath, the one with, that we worked on. Okay, now this earring course wants to be sharp so we're going to erase that in fact her hair also needs to be in focus so I'm going to go ahead and do her whole uh, this whole side of her head and for this I can make a bigger eraser you can see how this just brings everything into focus by erasing away the blurry part And the original photo has an intentional soft focus, which is a common practice in photography. So 
That's about as sharp as we're going to get it since that's the original. So let's go to our object manager. We'll see what we've done here. We're looking at two photos, my original photo with the blemishes uh, removed with the clone tool, and the top one, which is just the parts I wanted to be blurry, the skin areas. Everything else has been erased from that one. So my final step is I'll go up here and select this object, right click it and combine the two together, combine objects with background. And now it's a single photo. Um, you can see my background disappeared and this is my entire photograph. So all I'm going to do now is click exit and it will ask me if I want to save the changes, which I do. Yes. And there we go. Let's compare our two side by side, the original photo and our retouch. And I think we've done a fairly realistic job of uh, touching this up. Um, there are a couple areas in here I'm not really happy with. Um, if I had more time, I would uh, go back to Photo Paint with this and work on smoothing this part out a little bit more. I think for the purpose of the video, this is going to be okay. Um, so there's some things you can practice with. We learned the Clone Tool, the Smudge Tool, the Gaussian Blur, and the Eraser. So practice with those. I think you're going to enjoy retouching some photographs of your own. If you like this video, please subscribe. I'm uh, trying to make one a week at least. Uh, during the summertime, I get a little bit busy sometimes. I don't quite get there. But uh, there you have it, a simple photo retouch. And I hope your next project goes well.